Hello VC, the wax here. And today's video is special because I got my hands on an album almost a month early before its release. It is Hassan Ibn Ali Metaphysics. And what makes this a very special album is it was thought to be lost. Uh, this album is being reissued by Omnivore Recordings. I'll put a link on ordering it in the description because they only produced 1,500 of these albums, of the album. And you can also, they also have it on CD and a digital download. But um, I will have to first commend, I'll go over, I'll read, go over what I thought, I listened to it already. But just also how impressive uh, the production of this is. It to almost is better than a tone poet. Very similar. So the cover, and um, I, I believe this photo was taken. I'll get into who he is and what he achieved in the jazz world, but this is a gatefold. The liner notes are inside. There are some pictures of the, I'll get into explaining the tapes that was used to create this. In the back, another nice picture of him, just the liner notes. And it's also numbered. So I said there's only 1,500 of these made. Also, has a nice, uh, there's a nice hype sticker there. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And I will show you the albums. They spared no expense because these were pressed at a QRP. So, um, let me, it's a double LP set. So that was the second LP I will show you. The Oh, so that is the second one. That's side four. There's side three. Um, and then I will show you the first one. Okay. There's side one. And side two. There we go. Awesome. Okay. So this album, Hassan. Hassan is from... And Hassan is not his original name. Uh, his original name, and I'm going to pull up notes because I'm not a memorizing machine. But uh, he's from. He was from Philadelphia. He be, that's where he became known as a pianist. He um, from a young age practiced day and night. Was known for doing this. He was befriended by Odin Pope, um, who is, uh, I wouldn't say a famous saxophonist, but pretty known for being a saxophonist. Uh, he's still alive today. And they were friends uh, growing up and connected and would practice with each other. Uh, not to go into a long explanation, I suggest you go and read up on Hassan and who he was. Um, he would play with people and, and, and connect and got known in Philly and ended up in New York and, and befriended Max Roach. And that was his entry into his small notoriety. He, Max Roach pushed for him to record, uh, he vouched for him to Atlantic. So they recorded this album, uh, the Max Roach trio featuring Hassan and Actually, there's a reissue by Speaker's Corner that you can get that was put out on Atlantic that is a very well-regarded album. Um, I suggest you listen to it. It is good. But what makes Hassan different is he was known to have this very specific style. In fact, actually, it is said that he influenced John Coltrane. They kind of played together in the early 50s, very early 50s. And they say that John Coltrane's um, st style, the 
um, uh, the um, wall of uh, sheets of sound. Sheets of sound was influenced by Hassan. And Hassan was um, known for having this very distinctive um, piano style where um, it was uh, different. And I've listened to the album, and it is great. It is improvisational. Hassan wrote all the songs on his album, and I believe he wrote a lot on the Max Roach Trio album. And I can say that for me, and again, I am reasonably new to jazz, but it, it reminds me of Monk. His style is a little more out there than Monk, but to me, similar. And the album is, is not, you have to be, I think as a listener, it's an, it's another level of jazz as far as an entry point into like, again, kind of blue. This was the mid sixties this album, he recorded the trio album in 64. This was recorded in 65. And I think that was where jazz people started feeling that they could move in a new direction with jazz. But again, it still has, a, it's a, just a transition point and you can tell on this album, but it is great. What the best. So I, if you watch one of my other videos and I talk about, um, final urban myths and I don't know how many people knew about Hassan, but the story goes is that Max Roach vouched for him and Atlanta Atlantic liked what they heard in this album, the trio album. So they booked a recording session later that year and Hassan put together a, um, a, a band to record. It was a sax, a bass and drummer and him on the piano. And, uh, they, they recorded, I, I, I think Atlantic, as the story goes, which you could read, had them rehearse for a couple of weeks and they had two sessions. They recorded the album and Hassan left and went back to Philly. But when they wanted him to come back for the mixing of the album, he got into trouble with narcotics and was arrested. And the story goes that this Atlantic was totally discouraged by this and shelved the album. Cut to 10 years later or more, 1978. The place where the tapes were held caught fire and destroyed. They were destroyed. So this album was thought to be gone. No one would ever hear it. And in as the story goes, uh, years later, some investigation, they found acetates of the session they were converted someone some says in the early 70s uh and losing a song so uh you know cut to omnivore they were remastered and i will say this sounds great it i think they were converted to tape from the acetate in an analog process and then remastered the album really does sound good. Um, and again, my take on the presentation and the albums is equal to a tone poet, maybe slightly better. Um, it's, it's a, it's a good album. I suggest getting it. I think it hits the street, uh, in the middle of April at that. And there are only 1500 made and, it's, I think, 45 bucks. Um, go to Omnivore, buy it there, support that label. They are a reissue label. They put out some great stuff. Um, uh, and they have a great Art Pepper album, a lot, a bunch of Art Pepper stuff. Um, not a huge amount of jazz, but some good stuff there. I think they have some Jaco Pistoria stuff there too. But um, I hope you go i i know the trio album is on youtube you can listen to it um and 
you know, hopefully buy that one. But this, for something that was lost and found over 50 years later and put out for us to hear, that is what's great about the time we live in, that people hunt down and find these things that were thought lost in a fire. And um, please, as always, like, subscribe, and please leave comments. If you know more about Hassan than I do, please, if I didn't say something that uh, people should know, please comment. Until next time, the Wax Tower.